Hey, what's up, guys? Again, this is Mark Sabretooth Tiger Hansen. Um, again, I'm thinking of changing my name just to Tooth. <laughs> I don't know. But um, coming to you live from my car inside my vehicle, whatever. Um, but figured um, I did last week or a week before um, a video, and um, I said I was going to try to do it weekly uh, where it actually get on here and talk about like the the phrase of the day or the quote of the day or quote of the week and I kind of got off last week because I I'm not gonna lie to you I didn't hit the gym well no I hit the gym once but I was like tired like dead tired so I decided to take a break and this week I hit the gym and I got back and I decided I needed to do my video so I'm gonna do another video today today the quote of the week is um it's not necessarily a quote, just a saying of the week. And the saying is basically, you are not the main character in everybody's narrative. In fact, you might not even be a supporting role. Um, I think people need to really hear that and understand that, again, you are not the main character in everybody's narrative. In fact, you're not even... A supporting role in some people's character in some people's narrative what does that mean everybody on this planet earth is selfish we can try to talk about you know oh you know the godly we we care about each other and all that stuff but let's be honest it's it's basically a it's in our genetics to be self-aware and take care of self first. It's the reason why you can't bite through your hand. You can't put your, try it right now, put your hand up to your mouth and try to bite. You can't do it. You can't bite a chunk out of your hand. If you could, you're crazy. You're, you're literally insane. Because your, your, your first imperative is to take care of self. Make sure self is okay. So therefore, if you come into somebody's life, understand they're still thinking about themselves. They still have their own agendas. Now, they can put you in their agendas. Yes, they can put you in their narrative and make you part of their, a character in their, in their life. But the ironic part is, if you think for one instance, for love or anything, that all of a sudden that you become the main character in their life and they're thinking about you only, that's when you slip into a dangerous place. Because the truth of the matter is, people are always going to think about self first. Yes, family. Yes, kids. We can talk about all that stuff and love and all that stuff. And yes, there, there, there are situations where you switch it up. But the, the reality of it is you will always be the main character in your narrative. Put it this way. I can tell you the truth or lie to you. But when I go home and I look in the mirror, I still have to tell the I I know the truth when I look in the mirror at myself. You get it? Like, I, it always gets me with the, the N-word. Like, everybody talks about the N-word and white people not being able to say the N-word. And w when somebody does, we get on their case and tell them not to say it in public, blah, blah, blah. But what we, what we don't realize is we can tell somebody or get on somebody's case about doing something or saying something in public doesn't mean when they go home and look in the mirror, they don't do the same thing. You understand? It doesn't change the narrative. It changes what you see, but it doesn't change what actually happens because you're not the main character in their narrative. You don't have to go home with them. You don't see them in the mirror. You see you in the mirror. That's now, that's a negative, I guess a negative way of looking at it uh, going that way, you could also look at it in a different way too. Being as it that you realize when you come to realize that you come to realize that it's all about making sure you get to the plateau you want to, so that you can be put somebody else in your narrative, make somebody else a main character in your narrative. You can't do that in your life if you're consistently trying to be in somebody else's narrative or consistently trying to put somebody in your life when you're not ready yet. 
Make yourself the main character in your narrative first and realize that everybody else is the main character in their narrative and build your book. Tell your story. Be who you need to be first. And then when somebody comes along, you can conjoin books. You can be like volume two, me and -and so-and-so, and we have, we're husband and wife or, you know, whatever you are. And now, both of you guys can be the main character in your narrative. But it only happens once you've already built your story, realizing you are the main character in your narrative. And even when you actually get together and you can join storylines, remember, your wife, she's still the main character in her narrative. It doesn't mean she's evil or working against you. That just means that, again, when it comes to her uh, inner voice and her inner thoughts, that's her. She can express them to you and tell you what she's thinking and what's going on in her head. But the reality of it is she still only hears her inner voice. She doesn't hear your inner voice. You don't hear her inner voice. It's a harsh way of thinking, but it's an actual freeing way of thinking as well. Because you want once you realize that, you realize, oh, I can trust and I can't trust. It actually comes to, brings up a topic that I love that, uh, I think it was on a, uh, a radio show I saw that uh, DMX did. And DMX said this, he says, I trust, I trust a snake to be a snake, a rat to be a rat, a dog to be a dog, and a person to be a person. That's just it. Once you realize that people are who they are and things are what they are, you stop wishing or putting people in positions and thinking they are something that they're not. The moment you start to realize that you are not the main character in somebody's narrative, you're not disappointed when they don't show up. You're not disappointed when uh, they do something wrong. You're only disappointed because you didn't recognize that, hey, That person who's acting like a snake has been a snake the whole time because they're thinking about themselves. And again, it sounds very negative, but the positive part of that is once you realize that, you can now move forward without holding grudges, without being upset, without honestly focusing on mistakes. Because I know... A snake's going to be a snake, a dog's going to be a dog, a rat's going to be a rat. And I'm the main character in my narrative, so if I want something to change, I need to change it. Not somebody else. Not hope somebody else comes in my life and is going to fix it. I need to fix it. So that's the quote or saying of the week for me. Um, I got that. I forgot where I got that from, but I, but I, I heard that once and then. It always stuck to me. You are not the main character in everybody's narrative. So when you meet somebody, don't think they're looking out for you first. They're looking out for them first. And then if you become somebody who's, you know, they really care about, then you may become some a supporting character, but they still have their own inner voice. And it's not you. And it has nothing to do with you, in fact. Even when people do good... It's not because they're doing good because they heard your voice. It's because they thought about you with their own voice. Oh, that's a good one. I don't think people realize that. I'm going to say that again. Even when people do good and think about others, it's not because they were just thinking about you because you said something to them or you wanted it. It's because they thought with their own voice about how the other person felt. That's called empathy. There's some people in the world who don't have any empathy. Usually called psychopaths. But (laughs) those type of people do exist because the world, if you really realize it and come to grips with it, is a real selfish place. Now, again, it doesn't mean it's a negative thing. I know people hear that and they're going to go, oh my God, he's so negative, he's dark, let's go check on Mark and see if he's okay. I'm not saying anything's wrong with the way people think. I think that's a very, that's an imperative that's normal for us to have. We, 
I mean, we came in this world alone. We're leaving in this world alone. There's nothing wrong with that. What is wrong is when we as people assume that others should think about us first. Example, as a black man, I hate to hear this, and then people aren't going to catch me. I'm going to catch heat from this about this, but this is the truth. You cannot expect white people in the rest of the world to fix their mistakes for you. You can ask them to. You can tell them they should. But at some point, you got to realize you got to pick it up for yourself because they're not going to see it from your perspective. They're not in your head. They're not going through the same thing you're going through. All you can do is relay what you're going through. And just imagine somebody telling you they're in pain and you don't see they're in pain. Only if you have some type of empathy and you some type of feeling of like, okay, I, I want to make sure this person's okay, will you take care of that person? Another Another prime example of that. How many homeless people do you see on the corner and you pass every day? Do you give everybody a quarter? Do you give anybody any money? You know why? Because in your head, you're thinking, yeah, that person's not really as bad off as they're saying they are. Why don't they work? Because you're not the main character, or they're not the main character in your narrative. You, you in your head have thought, hey, that person's lying. And you very well could be telling the truth. That could be the exact issue. However, that just pinpoints my point. That you can't expect other people to take care of you. Because you're not the main character in their narrative. All right. I've, I've said that too many times. I hope you got it. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's my uh, quote for the week. I uh, hope to keep doing these. And again, I'm not going to make these like really pristine setups or anything like that this is just things that i'm gonna post and you know see where it takes it i don't i'm not trying to be famous or anything or rich or anything like that i just think this is really cool because this is a bunch of quotes that i used to how do i say this i used to um write them down in my notebook or in my uh, on my phone i used to type them out Every time I heard somebody say something or a quote I liked, I always used to do that. And I realized I got a whole list of these things, and I'm like, what am I doing with them? Although some of them I'm actually living by, a lot of them, it's good for people to hear. So I plan on doing this, you know, once a week, you know, just trying to keep it going. So um, if you like those and if you got any questions or any things that you want me to talk about, feel free to put that in the comments. Um, hit me up. Um and for those who hear me put post some of my uh, opinions and try to argue with me in the comments, I don't argue with people in the comments. I'm sorry. That's just dumb. If you want to talk to me and discuss something, we can do it either in person or, you know, DM me. I'm not trying to do some online battle between people because anybody who understands the Internet at this point, it's a bunch of people with opinions that really don't have any basis on what they're saying. Not only do they have any bases, they kind of bandwagon everybody. And I'm not trying to go through no Slim Shady type of, oh, I want to hear, uh, I, I don't like Slim Shady, so everybody who's a Shady fan is going to talk crap about you. That We're not doing that. We're not doing that. I'm grown. So if you got an opinion that's different than mine and you want to discuss it, DM me and we can talk about it. Um, but as far as, you know, just comments cool to put it down there don't expect me to reply to everything and if i do it'll just be you know back again with my opinion and and also uh, somebody also hit me up about deleting comments i don't delete comments i never have i think there's pe there's people that will go on and monitor what's said on facebook and stuff like that and if you don't if it's not something part of the community they'll delete it it's happened to me several times but more importantly than that if I do delete something you do, that's my prerogative. You're on my wall. <laughs> like, if you make a comment on my wall, yeah, I can delete it. If you wanted to talk to me and you really had a good opinion, you would talk to me personally. This is not about getting clicks or getting a bandwagon together. I'm not doing that. So, anyway, peace.
Peace, love, and, you know, hair grease. I guess that's a good way of saying it. Or ended it. I don't know. <laughs> my favorite thing I used to say is that part. So, um, again, I just ended with my quote and then say that part. There you go. Um, quote of the, the week again is, you are not the main character in everyone's narrative. That part. Have a good day.